is Destiny International Christian Assembly and Pastor Jide with the alternatives. Bringing the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel of the kingdom of God directly into the comfort of your home. Thank you very much for allowing us in your home on a weekly basis. We appreciate your love. May the Lord bless you. Today I want to share with us on what I have titled by the grace of God, Living a Divine Life. Living a Divine Life. It's so important for us to understand what divine life is all about. And I want to, by the grace of God, hoping that I will be able to explain that with my mortal mouth. And I'm hoping that the Holy Spirit, by the grace of God, will be able to help us to understand what that life is. Um, the purpose of this teaching is to bring understanding to us. Because wherever a man lacks understanding, um, confusion, uh, commotion, calamity is the result. But where there is understanding, then we'll be able to live the kind of life that God wants us to live here on this side of eternity. A man that mixes the wrong chemical with the right chemical will get the wrong result. Does that make sense? So you've got to have the right way to mix those chemicals to get the right result. And a lot of us in the church, we don't have understanding when it comes to divine life. A Christian life is a divine life. A Christian life, if you are writing, I will, I, will, I will ask you to write that down. Christian life is not just coming to church. It's not just reading the Bible. It's not just wearing the cross around our neck and say, I'm a Christian. A Christian life is a divine life. Everybody say divine life. It is the life and the nature that God has given to us here on earth. It is the life and nature of God. Divine life means the life of God or the nature of God that God has given to you and I so we can live like Christ lived on this side of eternity. Unfortunately, many of us do not understand this and we live like the rest of the world. God doesn't want you to live like the rest of the world. He said you are not of the world. Even Though you are in the world. Christianity is not a religion. Although you may find religion in Christianity, you, may make, you can make Christianity religion, but it's not. It's not. Listen to me. If you don't know that, you will live a frustrated Christian life. You will live a stagnated life. But if you know that Christianity is, a, is, is divine life, your life will continue to shine from glory to glory. So we must understand this, that Christianity is the nature of God in a human being. Christianity is a nature of God in a human being. This is the reason Jesus told us in John chapter 5, verse 39. He says, go and search the scripture. Now, I want you to listen to this. If there is nothing in a box, you don't tell somebody, go into that box and search for something. Does that make sense? Jesus said, search it. Search in the scripture. You will find out about you and you will find out about me. It, they testify of me. They testify of you. Remember, Jesus said, as I, as I am on earth, so are you. So whatever you find concerning Jesus is what you should find concerning you. Jesus said, search the scripture. I, I was thinking about it yesterday. Why would you tell somebody, go and search that place, you'll find the box I brought for you, if the box is not there? So Jesus said, search the scripture. If you want to live a divine life, you've got to search because it's available. If it's not available, Jesus will not say it's available. Now, 
this is so important. The problem why many of us are not living divine life is because we are lazy to search. Paul said, study the scripture. Study so that you can make yourself approved. In order for you to be approved by God, in order for you to be approved by the devil, in order for you to be approved by angels, you need to study the scripture. You need to find out what God says concerning that area of your life. And when you have found it, it becomes treasure. And once it becomes treasure, no one can take it away from you. And you and God then begin to work together on that particular thing because your mind and the mind of God on that subject has become one. Are you following me? So when we talk about divine life, we're not talking about a life that cannot be lived. We're talking about a life that can be lived. And I will show you the scripture. I've come to understand that I have shared this with you many times, but I want to repeat it. We came from the word of God. You are born again by the word of God. Is that okay? I said, is that okay? We all understand that we are born again by the word of God. The whole world is created by the word of God. You are created by the word of God. And the only way where you can find out how to live a divine life is through the word of God, not through any other means. There are so many means out there. But there's only one way that leads to God, and that is Christ Jesus. And the Bible says Jesus is the way, is the truth, and is the life. I've heard people use the term, what you are, what you eat. Anybody have heard that before? You are what you eat. Think about it. If you are 30 years old, you've been eating for the last 30 years. So you are what you have ate for the last 30 years. You are 70 years old. You are what you've been eating for. You say, yes, but I go to the toilet. You pass a waste. That's a waste. That's what your body doesn't need. So you are. Now, if that is true, your spirit is who you have been, what you have been feeding your spirit is who it is today. You can feed your body, and if you don't feed your soul, your soul will die. It will be stagnant. This is why our eyes of understanding many times is not open. Because we don't feed our soul. Your spirit and soul is made out of what you eat spiritually. I mean, it's, it's your, yes, your spirit and soul is strengthened out of what you eat spiritually. If you eat jargon spiritually, your soul and your spirit will not be in tune with God. So it's so important when we talk about living a divine life. Many people think you're talking about something that is out of this world. In a way, yes. But if you understand where we are going, you can live heaven on earth. You can live heaven on earth. And that's what God wants us to do. Jesus was talking and he said, I and my father are one in John chapter 10 verse 30. I and my father are one. And that's exactly the same thing God is tell telling us. If anyone is in Christ, it's a new creature. And Jesus said, we become one together with him if we have eternal life. You ask people, what did you get or what did you gain? Or what's the reason? Uh, what's your, what, why did Jesus die for you? They said they had to save me from my sin. And that's all? Is that all? Now, if you read the Bible carefully, Jesus did not die just to save you from the sin. Jesus died to save the world from the sin. When you come into Christ, there are benefits. There are what you receive. Just like in Deuteronomy chapter 6, I think it's verse 23, it took them out of Egypt into their inheritance. That must be coming out of into. Now, while I was preparing, the, the picture God gave me is this. Listen to this. While they were coming out of Egypt, 
and they got into the wilderness on their journey. They're already out of Egypt. On their journey to the wilderness, I mean to the promised land, to their inheritance, they were now in the wilderness. Why they were now in the wilderness? The Bible says for 40 years, there was no one that was feeble. There was no one that was weak. There was no one that died. In the wilderness. Now, God showed me a picture in my spirit. That's exactly what I want to do for believers. Take you out of the world, bring you into divine life. Into divine life. And we must understand when Jesus said in the Bible, He that received me, receive life. Receive what kind of life is he referring to? His life, divine life, the life of God. And we must understand that it's so important for you and I to understand that we are called to live a divine life. Since you are born again by the living word, you and God have become word, one rather. You and God has become one because God is the word. Jesus is the word personified. So you are born again by the word and you and God become one. And God impacted, I'm going to use a word here, God injected into you divine life. Everybody say divine life. Say it again, divine life. If you are not, that is why we need to go back to the word of God and find out what God has said about that particular situation that area of your life that you are struggling. There is always a way out. Can you say that? You must find that way out if you want to get out of the situation. And all that we need for life and godliness, listen to this, has been given to us. There is always a way out. Chicken out is not the answer to everything. Stay and find a way out of that situation. Listen, if you don't know the kind of life you are given, you will be like anybody has watched that film, Lion King. Anybody have watched it? You know that, that boy, Samba, is it Samba or Simba? He was a born to be a king. Born to be a king. And then he began to live with Tukum or Tamin, that uh, meerkat and wall, wall dog. And Nakuma uh, Matata, don't worry, be happy. And a lion, you know, if you remember, Simba asked a question. Are there giraffes or what is the book, they are, that animal? They, they, it, it was looking for animals to eat, to hunt. Now, what, one thing is this. When he first made those stupid things, one of them took a file, if you remember the film correctly, and filed all his, his nails off. His power was taken away from him because he was sitting in the wrong place. And he began to eat worms and leaves and until one day his eyes was open because God sent help. That's the way I put it. God sent help to him and took him out of that place. Then when his eyes was open, he realized that he was a king. And this is what happened to many Christians. Just like a, an eagle. Put an eagle among chicken. And he grew up with chicken. He will never fly. Because he has never seen a chicken flying. He will never soar above the highest mountain. Because an, a chicken can fly around there. And that's what he's going to do. This is how many of us live our lives. We haven't seen the picture that God painted. We haven't searched the scripture, as Jesus said. We haven't exposed our spirit to revelation. We have just stuck where we are, and we are okay how we are, because we don't understand what divine life is all about. I pray the Lord will deliver us in Jesus' name. I said all that to say this. There are believers who are waiting to get certain to certain age. And they know when they get to certain age, they are going to be sick. You know, because we have taken sickness as normal. You hear people say it's just an, a normal or ordinary headache. It's just a normal flu. 
we have lived in a culture, in a community where everybody is sick. You grow up where everybody is sick. The doctor that is treating you for arthritis has arthritis. The doctor that is giving you medication has sickness problem. So when you say to people you can live above sickness, their spirit cannot understand that and receive it because they have not fed their spirit with the truth of the word of God. When I was growing up, my mom has a medicine he gives all of us called Sunday Sunday medicine. Every Sunday after rice and chicken on Sunday, we take that medicine. We don't ask questions. We don't know what the medicine does. And then they said it takes away fever from you. After some time, you still have fever. They still give you the medicine. So we now grew up in a way that we have accepted that as norm. And yet Jesus said, anyone that have life has eternal life. Eternal life in that context is not talking about the life you're going to live in heaven. It's talking about living heaven's life here on earth. The question I always ask myself is, why is it that the disciples of Jesus Christ in three and a half years or the rest of their years before they died never recorded sick? They understand what it is all about. Including Judas Iscariot. Why is it that Jesus, while he was on earth, no time was recorded that he was sick? Because he was living a divine life. Until your spirit can receive it, you can live it. Can I repeat that? Until your spirit can receive it, you cannot live it. This is so important. You are, you are born again to live divine nature. You are born again to live in a divine nature. And when I talk about divine nature, I'm not talking about psychologically or I'm talking of fact, real divine nature. Now, in Revelation chapter 5 verse 9, the Bible says we are redeemed by the blood of Jesus. And in verse 10, it says we are made kings and priests unto God to reign on earth. Now, verse 12 tells us, gave us 12, I mean seven things that salvation brought to us. Seven things. So, I was saved from the world to come into my inheritance. These are the seven things that you and I must be enjoying as a born-again believer. Number one, he said, you will never know poverty. Number two, he said, you will have power over the devil. Number three, he said, you will always operate in wisdom. Number four, he said, strength. Strength in that context connotes health and vitality. Number five, number five, he said, honor and glory. And then he ends up and says, blessing. Now, if you don't know that, you ask people the question, what did you get when you are saved? He said, you're not supposed to get anything. I'm just saved. I'm just waiting one day by and by I will get to heaven. No, 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 no. You know? One day, you know, that song that we used to sing, I don't know. I'm happy, I'm born again, I'm happy. No, and you sing happy and you are not happy. This is what I call seven redemptive package. And as a child of God, you must search, put yourself in a place where those things must be reflecting in your life. They must be reflecting because it has been given given unto you. It has been given unto you. It has been what? Given unto you. In John chapter 6, verse 47, Jesus said, anyone that believes in me have everlasting life. And the life that is called everlasting life in John chapter 6, verse 47, can also be translated in another version, God kind of life. Or divine life. You must understand that the kind of life that you receive when you become born again. Christianity is not a religious folks. It's not. Christianity is not religion. Although you can make religion 
out of Christianity. We must see this with our spirit, and as we see this with our spirit, we will be able to receive what God is saying. Give me Second Peter, write down First Peter chapter three, chapter one, verse three to four. That is one place where God has promised you that when you are born again, you something is waiting for you in heaven. First Peter chapter one, verse three to four. Something is waiting for you in heaven. First Peter chapter chapter one, verse three to four. But I want to take you out of there. I want to take you into where God says here on earth, you can also enjoy life. Are you following me? In, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1, he says this, Simon, I, Simon Peter, a servant and the apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith. I stop there. What does it mean we have obtained like precious faith? If you give me Romans chapter 12, verse 3, the Bible says God has given each and every one of us the measure of faith. King James says a measure of faith. Original said the measure of faith, which means each and every one of us have, this, have received from God the same measure of faith. The issue is how do we develop that faith to possess what God has given us. Now, go back to 2 Peter chapter 1. It says in verse 2, um, grace and peace be multiplied unto you in the knowledge of God. Now, have you heard people that pray, God give me grace, God give me grace, God give me grace, God give me grace. He said grace multiplied up based on the understanding of how much you know God. Again, going back to what Jesus said in John chapter 5 verse 39, you must search the scripture. The word knowledge in this verse is gnostic. It's not talking of scientific knowledge. It's not talking of reading knowledge. It's talking of the knowledge that while you are searching for the truth concerning that situation, there is a revelation knowledge in your heart about that. Peter, flesh, I am the one that is teaching you. But what you have just said out of your mouth, flesh and Blood has not revealed it to you, but the Holy Spirit revealed it to you. Until we come to a place where, while we are searching the scripture, concerning that particular issue of your life, and the Holy Ghost reveals to you and say, that is it. And you have the ability to be able to receive and say, this is God. You can have victory in that area. You can quote the scripture. You can recite the scripture. You can preach like I'm preaching, but until you have divine revelation concerning that particular issue of your... In this context, I'm talking about divine health. I'm talking about divine life. So it's important for us to understand this. Now, it continues in that verse. It says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Keep going, please, verse 3. Verse 3 says, according as... His divine power has given unto us how many things? In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 4, it says, those things are in heaven. Here, I will show you that it's here on earth. All things. Assuming you are looking for a job, you have been finding, finding for a job, you haven't been working for a long time, and then all of a sudden, somebody said, why have you been looking for a job? He said, because I don't have. He said, but there's a job waiting for you there. Until you find it, you can't see it. God says, I have prepared all things for life. Is health part of that all things? I said, is health part of that all things? I said, is health part of that all things? It is. Pertaining to life and godliness through, again, the knowledge. Search the scripture. See where it is written concerning you. Everywhere Jesus goes, the Bible says, is search the scripture. And he found out where it is written concerning him. He says he has called us unto glory and virtue. Glory and virtue. Verse 4. This is very important now in verse 4. By which you have been given an exceeding great and precious promises that by this 
great and precious promises, you might be partaker of what? Divine nature. Haven't escaped the corruption of this world. So, this is where God is taking us. He wants us to live a divine life here through the knowledge of God. But God is calling you that that kind of life is possible. Everybody say it's possible. Say it again, it's possible. Say it confidently, it's possible. That life, all things pertaining to life and godliness through the knowledge of of God. All things I need for life has been given to me. That's basically what Peter is saying. And until you come to that, you will never, never live that divine life. Listen to me. I want to close here. When I found out about this, my spirit shouted and said, and I've shared this with you many times, I can never be oppressed of the devil again. I can never be molested by witches and wizards. I can never, never. I have dominion over sickness. I have dominion over disease in the name of Jesus. I can never live in poverty in my life again. Because he has give, provided all things I need. I only need to go to him and find out how I need to get it. And you must understand this. Many years ago, I told you the story. I was reading where the Bible says that Jesus has taken my sickness away. And I was still getting sick like, a, like an hospital. The sickest place on earth is hospital. All kind of disease are there. And when I got married, I was still getting sick. And, you know, paracetamol, chloroquine, everything. Until one day, I said, but Jesus, you said you took my sickness. I took my Bible, listen to me, listen to me. And I took a book that is called The Balm in Gilead. And I went on a three-day journey, fasting and praying. I said, I must see what God has written concerning me. While I was reading, in my spirit, I heard God say, what is that in your hand? I said, it's a biro, it's a pen. He said, if I take that pen from you, do you still have it? And I answer him, no, sir. He said, why are you still saying you are sick? Oh, so he took it. If, I, if he has taken it, then I must not confess I have it again. From that moment till forever. My wife, Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, and all of you here in the church are my witness. I have never been sick again. In the name of Jesus. But I got the revelation. I got now the revelation he showed me might not be the revelation he showed you, but you must have that revelation through the knowledge of him. Sickness and disease has nothing to do with glory and virtue, has nothing to do with it. I want to close here. Maybe you are watching this online uh, on TV right now, and you say, But how can that be possible? It's possible. You need to start first of all by giving your life to Jesus. You know, you need to go to God and confess your sin and admit that you are a sinner before God. Jesus died for you on the cross of Calvary. And once you, has, you have come, the Bible says, when you give your life to him, you become a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things. In, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he said, he became sin that you might become the righteousness of God. And once you have done that, you can also have this life that we are talking about, which is divine life. I want to encourage you. You can live this life. I am a testimony to that. I'm a living testimony to that. And that is just one area that God has revealed to me. What about all the rest of those seven redemptive package? Thank you for joining us on this program. It's a Pastor Jai. Thank you for watching. Until I see you next week, may the Lord bless you.